What's going on, you homesteading homo sapiens? Welcome to Grunt Speak, not so. Live from the lair! Terrence Pop, Toxic Mail, welcome to the show. We got an email for you today from Alex, who is, in his own words, in the suck. And We've it's all actually, been there. This is a tough situation, and yep. he's asking for some advice from the popster. All right. If you are sick and tired of Hollywood's brainwashing in disguise and the insanity is just too much, we've got the answer for you. And it's completely free on Tubi. Not So Sane Entertainment presents their greatest hits complete with cyberpunk conspiracies, hilarious hotties, lady lawmen, zombie babies, and cameos by some familiar faces. You want to give them the right to vote? It's a right provided to them by the queen. For the f her, she's a whore. So begin your odyssey away from the dreck of Hollyweird and enjoy some good old fashioned entertainment for a change. Links are in the meat gazer box. Been a fan for a long time. I've gotten through five years in the Marines and a lot more BS since getting out in 2019 in part thanks to your content. I seem to be at my breaking point this time and I'm hoping for some advice. Your idea of a breaking point and mine are radically different. Like my breaking point would be me standing over my entire family and friends dead. All right, so you need to readjust your shock group and move it farther, and much farther to the right. All right, as a Marine, uh, you know, we chewed probably a lot of the same dirt in different parts of the country. All right, and uh, trust me, when you set your breaking point that far, the only time you'll get there is when you're dead. And that's one of the reasons on this hat there's a skull. That is my right limit. I literally will continue on through hell and high water until I die. That, is, that should be your breaking point. All right, you keep that in the back of your mind, and no matter how bad it gets, it dials it down from 10 to like a 7 or an 8. It, it makes it a little bit more manageable. That's just one of those like psychological tricks that I use. Hopefully it, it'll help you out. I planned on moving to Montana to assist a friend and fellow vet who's been screwed over by the VA, denying his health care and going back on their word to pay for what little treatment he'd been able to coerce out of them. So this is why we had to do a whole stream on the VA screwing people over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, uh... The VA is uh. run by a bunch of diversity hires. Okay, before they did that, they still had C-plus personnel. Ugh. So every time you go in there, you're not going to get the 80 or 90 or even 100% answer. You're going to get a C-plus, you know, 75% answer. Semi-correct, but it's not uh, accurate enough to actually put you on the objective. That's pre-diversity hire mentality. Yes. That, that was on a good day. Yeah. Now you're going to get that from the VA on their absolute best day. That's absolutely correct. Like from, when somebody's in the office doing like the equivalent of a mystery shop and they're looking over everybody's shoulders to make sure they're dotting every I and crossing every T. Ooh. Yeah. Um. Ugh. Bureaucracy. Ain't it a beautiful thing? You know what? Bureaucracy can kiss my... Ass. If you know how to use it, it, it can become quite powerful. That's why we have administrative violence. It's still available. If you want to check it out, link in the Meat Gazer box in the link tree. As such, his credit is completely screwed and was receiving lots of calls from collection agencies. His situation is awful, and I'm partly to blame for it as I helped to convince him to stay in a situation he knew would be awful. I can't justify it in my own head. I only know that I thought it would all work out in the end despite the difficulties. Wow, was I wrong. Well, unfortunately, that's that's how life goes. Now, your friend is getting calls from collection people and his credit's in the toilet. Have him file a Chapter 7 bankruptcy. If he's that medically you know, broken and he's not working, it should be a layup. Mm -hmm. All right, and then you wait about three or four months after the bankruptcy is discharged. And you have to send that discharge, the bankruptcy discharge, to each of the three credit reports that are uh, recording bad shit on them. And then you have to send that bankruptcy discharge to all the companies that were reporting on his credit. Then uh, open two secured credit cards. 
you, you give them 500 bucks, one Visa, one MasterCard, have them use that once a month to go out to dinner, and then pay it off in full at the end of the month. It'll take about a year, and then have them apply for a third piece of credit, like buying a flat screen TV. Take a year to pay it off, pay it off in full on time. At the end of that uh, year and a half, two year period, his credit score should be in the five, the higher 590s, 580s. And then if he continues to do the same thing while paying on time with three credit lines, usually your credit is completely fixed within 36 months. <laughs> How do I know this? This is the same advice I gave to thousands of veterans trying to get VA loans to buy houses in the 10 years I did mortgages. And who wants to bet dollars to donuts? Most of those bankruptcies were necessary because of divorce. Uh, yes, most of them were for divorce. I had one guy who wanted to buy a house. He'd been divorced for five years. I pulled his credit. He's $67,000 in revolving debt. <sighs> so his ex-wife, oh. she applied for, uh, for trade lines in his name to uh, buy the materials to flip houses. And she was doing a great job. She, he didn't even know it because there was no late payments. But the thing is, that's a lot of debt to have on your books, and it was throwing his DTI off. He literally had to call the FBI and have him go after her. Get that bitch! To make a long story short, and this is where we get into the meat and potatoes of this fuckery here, he, myself, and three others, so we're talking about five dudes, all decided to get some land and a house together, make it a homestead, and it all fell apart. Yeah. Listen, I know that's tough. I'm trying to do the same thing. Yeah. It's expensive. Uh, you have to deal with uh, nugs who don't really want to give you 100% effort, but yeah. they want 100% of the pay. Every group project has the, those one or two dudes. They just want to coast a buy on everybody else's work. Unfortunately, this sort of a situation, because we're heading into some very, very dark economic times coming up, is going to be a very common thing pitched between friends. You just better understand that you need to know who you're getting in this balls deep with yep. before you throw in on a mortgage because yeah. it can get bad in a hurry. I mean, uh, there's a lot of guys who get out of the service and do exactly what you know these people are doing, and they pull it off. Yeah, I don't know if they have more seed capital, but I do know uh, as a veteran, there's, there's supposedly like business loans and other loans available, uh, but they're just like a VA loan. You have to have these, you know, fairly good credit to give it to get most yeah. of that stuff. And I'm going to be honest, the VA because they operate at a D to D minus level, <laughs> it could take three or four years to get that stuff approved. It is atrocious. And of yeah. course, this is just my opinion. Maybe somebody has a, a different experience with the VA. I certainly haven't. It's, uh, just imagine waiting around three to four years to get word for a loan that you need now. What are you supposed to do? This. Yeah, right. For the next three years? Yeah, Come on. Ca it's called uh, thumbjacking your shit box with a switch. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, taste that pre-chewed food. Oh. Ah! 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 <laughs> My friend and I wasted our savings on ventures that didn't go anywhere productive to the overall group. And we feared for our lives from the danger of malevolence and incompetence of the other three two of whom are fellow vets to add insult to injury. So you got four vets and a regular dude in there. All right. Now, uh, I've run into this as well. Veterans are just people. Yeah. A lot people. of them, you know, are similar to me. They got off active duty, and they're just flat bush broken. All right. Because that takes a lot out of a man. Every time you put that pack on, you're wearing your body down. Every time you uh, do a movement to contact or a convoy in enemy territory or even uh, a raid or an ambush, any, any combat op, it, instead of wearing away on your body, it wears away on your mind. Yep. And quite literally, you can only wear the stone down so much before it's just unstable. Like all of the vets out there who are suffering from PTSD, anxiety, what have you, this applies to all of them, even myself. I am not above any of these people. I'm just a... A walking meat suit like everyone else. Yep. We've said it before and we'll say it again on this show. A lot of the wisdom that comes from the guys in this room comes from making mistakes. Correct. And, and uh, 
Yeah. And I talk about this uh, this exact same scenario in my book, The Warrior's Way and the Soldier's Soul, mm-hmm. in regards to using weapons. Like the weapon is designed to kill the target you fire at. But what they don't tell you is every time you do that, it kills a little bit of you, unless you're some kind of uh, sociopathic psycho. All right, so you have to use it sparingly. It's a social handicap that you have to walk through the rest of your life with at that point. I would say so. Constantly wrestling with demons that are inside. Yeah, yeah. I lock mine in a box, and he's called Evil Pop. Evil Pop. He comes out of the box once in a while, uh, and every time he does, he has a hankering for mint chocolate chip ice cream. <laughs> or whiskey, or maybe both. I, don't, I can't remember what he does. Uh, when you figure out how to blend the two, it's going to be a very sad day for some people nearby. Of course. I'm just kidding. Right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Your Honor, I have no idea how that watchtower got outside my ex-wife's house. I have no idea. It was there. Evil Pop got out of the box. Next thing I know, I got an auger and a Pringles can, and I'm going to town in a grave. I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Del Taco shit's compact and uh, save up over time, and then when they come out, they're quite deadly. <laughs> He's at the point where he can't advocate for himself, and I have to do it for him. I owe the guy way too much to give up. What I'd like nothing more in the world is for him to be able to be happy with his dogs, but that goal is hard to see through the haze of BS. Life is nothing but a haze of bullshit. Yeah. All right, listen, you're not not saying or talking about anything we don't. All of us have to encounter, even civilians. Yeah. When you have problems, the rest of your life doesn't stop so you can deal with those. So the haze of bullshit is always there. Yes. Always. I'm working two jobs, going to business school, and I'm selling eggs from our 300-plus chickens. All with that goal in mind, and it's taken its toll. If you start selling eggs just a little below market value right now, you could make a killing. (laughs) Yeah. Yes, you can. So maybe you're already on the right track here. I don't know. In the world of Bidenomics, anything is possible. Most of it negative. I don't know how much longer we can keep this going sometimes. If I could get the illegitimate debt cleared and his credit fixed, it would solve a lot of our problems. But I haven't been able to get any help with it, and frankly, I don't know if I can without a lot of time and effort or making him seem like a charity case. Any help on that end would be appreciated. Well, you tackled that one right out of the gate. Yeah, no, um... A Chapter 7 bankruptcy for an individual who's destitute was going to cost you around fifteen to 1800 bucks. Just. It'll take about six to eight months to go through this, the whole court system. Uh, the people who owe the debts are going to bitch, moan, and complain. But if he has no income and he's really this compromised, it's going to get approved. Uh, listen, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not giving you legal advice. I've just seen veterans in the same scenario do the exact same thing. And they did get some relief. Yeah. And you do have a background in finance. Yes. You know. And you, you're a nug, you know, just like most grunts, but you do have that financial background. So, yeah, yeah. Which is coming I handy. mean, just because I talk like a grunt doesn't mean I don't think like, like a 30-pound <laughs> brain. You're just not thinking fourth dimensionally, Marty. <laughs> I hope things are well on your end. It's taken me a long time to get this written, far longer than it should have. I hope things are well on your end. It's taken me a long time to get this written, far longer than it should have. I'm on head meds now, something I never thought I'd take. Listen, uh, I did the head meds for a year after I came back from Iraq. Actually, it was like 14 months. Don't stay on them. If you you have a choice at all, don't stay on them. Yeah. Listen, there are supplements you can take that will assist... You know, coaxing your thinking meat into a more positive state. Head meds, yes, they do help. Actually, they don't even really help that much. They just help you maintain and cope. Yeah, and if you keep taking them long term, they permanently alter your brain chemistry. Yeah, and listen, I've said this in my book, The Warrior's Way. No one heals you but you. Yeah. That's it. I mean, the, the hospitals, the doctors, they can give you the tools. But if you don't use them, they, they're not going to really work. But then again, I never thought I'd want to blow my brains out in shame for so far failing in everything I've wanted to do for my last friend in the world. I know I have to keep going. I don't have a choice. How do I get through this? Well, I believe we covered most of that. Uh, yeah. One, you know, move your uh, breaking point further to the right. Uh, that'll assist. Two, you know, the bankruptcy. Uh, three, focus on what you do have that's working for you. He said he had 300 chickens. Mm -hmm. All right. Why not, you know, get uh, three or four pigs or three or four steers 
All right, and then sell the meat. How dare you? And once those chickens are all legged out, you got that as well. Yeah. Uh, my heart goes out to this guy. His heart's in the right place. He's doing the, trying to do the right thing. Yeah. But I'm going to be honest, uh, doing the right thing through uh, much of the process, you're literally eating shit. The road to hell is paved with good intentions and no good deed goes unpunished. Those yeah. are <laughs> those are two expressions or whatever you want to call them, aphorisms that have been around forever for a very good reason. Yeah, and if you can stick to your guns long enough, bad luck is like good good luck. It eventually runs out yep. and you can overcome this. Yeah, the only thing that you're really guilty of is you had sympathy for these dudes. You expected them to be all in just like you are. Yeah. Like I said, every group project has people that just want to skate by on the work of others. That's why when you do something like this, you want a homestead set up with a group of people, you all have to be on the exact same wavelength. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. Ugh, it's very unfortunate, like I said, and we are going to see a lot more of this sort of thing moving forward because people are just under way too much pressure. We're going to start seeing more multi-generational housing again. It's going to be like the Grapes of Wrath. For the next two generations, it's if it does turn around, it's going to be a shit show. It's going to be just as painful to turn it around as it has been to watch it go to shit. Well, like my in my case, in a few, you know, I don't know when my mother's going to pass away, but that's the last of my functional family. So I'll literally be totally isolated out there flapping. There are 512 dudes who they look to you like uh, like family. I mean, I understand. So you're not but... out there flapping just because biology says that you don't have family. Yeah, the best yeah, family you. that you really have in this life is the one that you create for yourself. You are correct. You, you can pick your friends, but not your family. Yeah, just the fact right now, I guarantee you off the top of your head, you could think of like 12 dudes that you could call at a moment's notice and be like, hey, I got to bury a body. And they'd be like, where do I got to be? Of course you can't phrase it like that. No, no. I'd have to phrase I no, have no. this The NSA is listening in and we get all fucked up. I have this very heavy refrigerator that I have banded <laughs> shut. Could you and some of your, you know, could, could you come over and help me move it? Don't forget to bring the shovel. If you have three people in your life who will drop everything at a moment's notice to help you with anything, you are leagues ahead of most others out there. Yes, you are. Don't forget that. So it might seem like you're at your breaking point now. But I guarantee you, there's still a lot to live for. And it's not just because you feel obligated to do it. You just got to find it. Yes, you do. Absolutely correct. All right. You guys take it easy. Send us your stories. If you're in a pickle like this and you want to get some advice or even just hear us joke about it so that you can learn to laugh at the atrocity that your life has become, <laughs> link tree in the Meat Gazer box. You can send us an email directly through there. All right. Uh, outstanding. Take it easy. Take it easy.